Wow, this has been quite a week in photography news. On Tuesday, Adobe dropped their brand new Photoshop beta with generative AI, and it has photographers everywhere buzzing. Some are saying it's the most significant update that Photoshop has had in 20 years. Others are skeptical of its capabilities, and a few even fear it. Where do you fall on that spectrum? I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and in this video, I'm going to give you the scoop and show you how Photoshop AI works. I'll also give you my thoughts on whether or not I think it lives up to all the hype. I have some very strong opinions on this subject, and I invite you to share yours as well as we delve into this topic of generative AI. So if you're ready, let's do it. First, let's take a look at what Photoshop AI can do. But before I do that, I want to show you that the original image came from Pixabay. It's a free stock image that you can download. I want to show you this because once I show you the after, I want you to understand that Photoshop generated all of the stuff that you see in the after image. It wasn't there to begin with. So this is a cropped image where you don't see the bottom of the horse or the top of the horse. So keep that in mind. Now, let me show you what I created. Here's the after. You'll notice that I added a scarf and a hat to the lady, as well as a red harness on the horse. But bigger than that was I expanded the canvas and Photoshop filled in the horse's ears and legs, as well as the background. I further refined it by adding the stone castle looking building on the right and the red door. So all of that was generated. It did not exist before. Let me show you how it works. Remember, you need to have the beta version to test this out. If you have a current subscription with Adobe, you can download that using your Creative Cloud app. Mine is in my top toolbar. And you'll notice on the left hand side, if you go down a bit, it says beta apps. This is where you will get Photoshop and Bridge. I downloaded them both because then from Bridge Beta, it'll open directly into Photoshop Beta when you double click those images. Once you install it, it will run side by side with the normal version of Photoshop. Again, keep in mind this is a beta, so you may encounter some bugs and it's not fully completed yet. Okay, here's the original image that you just saw on the Pixabay stock website. The first thing I did was expanded the canvas by using the crop tool and then asked Photoshop to fill it in. And you can see that it did a really great job filling in the bushes and trees in the background as well as the top of the horse. Next, I added a red scarf around the girl's neck here. Let me zoom in a little bit. Then I added a hat. This one was a little bit trickier because I had this thing in mind of a, a medieval princess with the tall cone hat and I couldn't get what I wanted. So it's a little bit tricky to use. I'll show you how it works in a moment. You have to get the right selection and the right text prompt. Then I added a red harness around the horse and tassel to match the scarf. Then I expanded the canvas again and filled it once more. This one was a little bit hit and miss. When you use the generative tools, you get some options. And if I scroll through them, you can see what happens at the bottom here. The horse's legs were not realistic. In fact, he's got an extra hoof or deformed leg here. So it's not as good at generating people and animals yet. Again, remember, it's the first iteration. So I found that it did a really good job on the grass and the trees not so much on living things. This was the best one, so I kept this one. Then I did another selection and added the door. So are you starting to see the power of this tool? Here are a few more before and afters. In this image of the man running on the dirt road, I added several new elements. The puddle on the road was expanded. I added a bush on the right-hand side of the road, birds in the sky, and the Jeep on the road behind him. You'll notice that when I added the Jeep, Photoshop automatically made it out of focus because it's outside the depth of field. So that's pretty smart. But I also had a few fails. I tried to add a bear 
chasing him, which I thought would be funny. And apparently that goes outside of their guidelines. You're not allowed to create anything violent. So actually, I think that's a good thing because this tool can also be used to do some bad things. The bear's also a little bit cartoonish. I had that show up a few times. Like I said, it's not great at creating live elements yet. Likewise, I tried to add a group of additional runners behind him. And well, you can see what happened there. They look kind of ridiculous. So in my experience, it doesn't do a great job of generating human faces from scratch yet. We'll see where it goes with future versions. In this next one, you see a studio portrait of a man. I transformed him into a punk rocker using the tools, and it was fairly easy to do. You'll notice that the background has been changed. I've added punk hair and a beard, as well as some earrings and jewelry, including tattoos. Again, I had hit and miss results in terms of how I made the selection for the beard and also the prompt, the text that I used to get the result that I wanted. Let's take a look at a live example. Here's another image that I took from a stock website. I believe this one is from Unsplash. And I added a bunch of elements once again. I added the storm clouds, the crab on the beach, the starfish. I asked for a sand dollar and I literally got a dollar bell the pirate ship, and the lightning. And as you can see, some of the elements work better than others. The lightning, not so much. So let me show you how this is done. When you open Photoshop data for the first time, you should see this new toolbar. It's called the contextual toolbar. If you don't see it, just go up to window and then make sure that it's turned on here. You can move it around and you can also lock it in position so I'm just going to lock it there. Next, get a selection tool. Any of the selection tools are fine. I'm going to use the lasso. So I'd like to add a big starfish right about here. So I'm going to create a circle. And then all you have to do is type in the box. Just click and type what you want to generate. Then click generate. Now I'm going to do this real time on this first one so you can see how long it actually takes. What Photoshop is doing is sending the image up to the cloud and sending your request up to the cloud. So you need to be connected to the internet to do this. Then it's pulling out some data based on files and stock images that it has stored to produce some results for you. Now you can see that it's given me three variations. So you can just click on the variations to see which one works the best. You'll notice that it's got a shadow next to the starfish in the same direction of the shadow on the log. Doesn't quite match though, this one has a harsher shadow. So if you're not happy with the results, you can just click generate again, and it will give you three new variations. That one's a little slimy looking. See, this one looks like it's got a jellyfish on it. So of the starfish that I've been given, I think this one is probably the best. What's happened now is you'll see that a new layer has been generated with a mask. So you can just turn the layer off and on if you decide you don't want the starfish. But what if I want to move it to another position? If I take this starfish and move it over here, for example, you'll notice that the beach doesn't quite match. The sand has come with it in the selection. So to get it to match, all you have to do is click generate again. Unfortunately, it's going to give you three new options. It's not going to regenerate the same one that you had before. So I hope that's something that they resolve in the future iteration. Well, now I just got really weird looking starfish. So I'm just going to do a couple of undos to get rid of these versions here. And I'm going to go back to the one that I had originally. You can delete any of the versions you want from here because it does make your file larger. So the more variations you generate, the larger the file will get. So be conscious of that as well. Now let's try and add a ship. This is the one I had trouble with because when you're doing a selection, you have to be really specific about the shape that you draw and it's going to fill that shape in with your object. First of all, let's just try something round. Okay, so if I make a round selection and then type pirate ship because that's what I really wanted, let's see what happens. Now I've got three choices once again. And they're not bad, 
but you can't rotate them if you want it to go the other direction. And you also can't give it commands such as facing left or facing right. I tried that. It doesn't work. The thing that I find about these is that they're a little bit cartoony. You'll notice that this one looks completely black. Perhaps it's black sails for pirates. This one is not bad. These are actually better results than I got when I tried this before. Let's try one more. I tried a selection like this and I wanted to add a sailboat. So I tried making a shape that would be like a sailboat shape. You can also type into the properties box here and click generate as well. So you see it's added a sailboat, but I wanted it going the other direction. These are actually not bad. And you'll notice that it fills in nicely with the clouds. Now let's try the sky. When selecting the sky, Photoshop will do that for you automatically. So just go up to select sky. Aha, okay, now you see my first problem is I was on the wrong layer. So it's selected the sky in the sailboat layer. I need to go to the bottom layer. Let's try that again, select sky. So make sure when you're doing your selection that you are on the correct layer. Now it has successfully selected the sky. So now I am going to put in here stormy clouds with lightning. Okay, now you see a couple more problems. It's replaced her face and the lightning is not super realistic looking. And as well, it's masking out the boat incorrectly because the boat layer is on top. If I try and put the sky layer on top, now the boat is gone. So we either have to redo the mask or another trick you can do get rid of this layer, is to make a stamp layer first. That's Command Alt Shift E. I use a lot of keyboard shortcuts to do things when I'm editing. If you'd like a free keyboard shortcuts cheat sheet for Photoshop, I'll put a link in the description area below for you. And if you would like some more traditional training on Photoshop and not necessarily use all this AI technology, but you wanna know how to use all the tools in Photoshop, Check out Photoshop for Photographers, the complete course, available on my website, digitalphotomentor.com. There are over 12 hours of instructional videos to teach you how to use Photoshop right from the beginning. So if you're brand new to Photoshop, this is the course for you. If you've been using it for a while, you may get some reminders of things that you had forgotten, so it would be a good refresher for you, and you may pick up some great tips along the way as well. Okay, back to our image. Now we've made a stamp layer. I can do select sky again and try the process once more. This time I'm going to do it without the lightning and do the lightning separate. So I'm just gonna enter storm clouds and generate. As you can see, there's a lot of hurry up and wait when you're using this tool. Every time you click generate, it takes about 10 seconds to give you some variations. So be prepared to have patience with it. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole image. Once again, it's gone over her face, but I'm going to pick the one that has the best storm clouds and then we'll just fix it. I think this one looks pretty good. So because this layer has a mask already built in, you can just use the brush tool to make sure that it's not on her face, like so. So I just Paint her back in. There we go. Now that I have storm clouds, I can add some lightning. And herein lies the challenge. I tried doing a selection just like this and asked for lightning. Here's our three variations. This one's actually not bad, but I don't know about you. I've never seen black lightning. Let's try it one more time. Do you see what I mean? It's a little bit cartoony and unrealistic looking. The one that gave me the most humorous results was when I asked for purple lightning. So let's try that one. These are better than I got the first time and I think it has to do with the shape. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to delete this layer and try again. What I did was I made something that looked like what I thought the shape of lightning would be like. So let's try something like that. You see what I mean? So the results were really sort of hit and miss. Let's see if we can make lightning hit the boat. Now we got nothing. So either my selection wasn't good enough 
or it's trying to match it with the image behind and it's not understanding what I want. I'll try one more time. Closer, we've got some lightning in the first one, but it's not doing a full strike. So again, it's hit and miss according to the selection that you make and the words that you type in. So you have to be very specific and be prepared to play around with both variables to get the result that you're looking for. Another one that I tried without any luck was a rainbow. I wanted a rainbow to sort of arch across here. So what I did was I had the rainbow coming out of the sky. I'm just gonna make an arch, something like this, that I thought was a good rainbow shape. Let's see what happens. Yeah, not so much, right? It looks like it was drawn with a brush and I've never seen a rainbow go that way in terms of the color changing. <laughs> so e fail on that one, Photoshop. Here's another three variations that I tried to generate again. And I'm gonna say, no, they need to work on rainbows more. There are a couple of things to note about this beta version. First of all, it's only available with selections of 1080 pixels. Meaning if you make a selection larger than that and it fills it, it only uses an image that's 1080 pixels long on the long side. So if your area is larger than that, it will become pixelated. Let's take a look at the image size before I rescale it. It's currently 7,900 pixels wide. So if I extend it more than 1,080 on each side, we should see some pixelation. So using the crop tool, I'm going to expand it this way and this way, and let's go up as well. Once the crop is done, what you need to do is just select the outer portion. And the best way to do that is to use the marquee tool and just select the image minus a little bit around the edge. Then invert the selection. Now I have the white part on the outside selected. In the box here where it says generative fill, click as you did before. This time, instead of typing anything, when you just click generate, Adobe has said that it will use content aware fill to fill in the details of the blank bits. So let's try that. You'll note that I did have to make another stamp layer with the crop applied and all the other layers merged before I attempted this step. And here's the result. It's pretty amazing, right? It filled in the trees and continued with the, the hill, added a rock back here, made a little island, and even completed the reflection in the water as well. So if I turn that off, you can see what it's created. But let's zoom in to 100%. Aha, can you see the problem here? You can see where the original image ends and the new one begins, it goes a little blurry. That's because of the limitation of the pixel size. So if you want to extend an image a lot at this point, do it section by section. Then you won't be outside of the limits of sizing. The second limitation is that it's not allowed to be used for commercial purposes at this point. So you can't generate an image like this and sell it for stock. That's a no-no. Again, I imagine this is something that they're still trying to figure out licensing as to who owns these images that are being added into yours and then who owns the final product. It's a really great area and something that is confusing to say the least. Before I continue with the demonstration, let's get the discussion started. I wanna ask you a few questions. Do you think you're gonna be using this generative AI technology in Photoshop or any other software that comes out with it with your photography? What are your thoughts on generative AI in general? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Or is it truly evil? And why do you think that? Let's start a discussion on this. I'll go first. I will probably play around with it quite a bit because to be honest, it is fun. But in my actual photography, I'll probably use it sparingly, maybe from time to time. I didn't think I would use sky replacements when they first came out either, and now I do. So I can't really say definitively one way or the other at this point. As I mentioned, I do have some strong opinions on AI in general. It's already causing some photographers that I know personally to lose paying jobs and for them to consider a career change. So that's pretty extreme. 
As well, nothing you see on the internet can be trusted anymore, even more so than before. Case in point is this image of a baby peacock that circulated on Facebook a while back. People were sharing it, saying how cute the baby peacock was. This is a 100% AI-generated image. It's not what baby peacock chicks look like at all. They're brown. So people were sharing this without verifying its validity or accuracy. They believed it was true. So are we, as human beings, becoming less intelligent at the same time while computers are getting smarter? What does that mean for us as a society, not just for photographers? Hence, where the scary part comes in. I have some real trepidations about where this takes us. Only time will tell. As for photography and art, though, I personally believe that the generated images just don't have the same feeling. There's no mood. There's no storytelling. There's no soul. It's just fake art. So, what are your thoughts? Do you have strong opinions like I do? Tell me. Let's chat. So pause the video, put your thoughts in the comment area below, and then continue. I'll wait for you. Okay, to get back to our image, I'm going to undo this layer that I added. So instead of trying to do the whole thing at once, I'm going to do it section by section. I need a little bit more of that image. So you want to grab a little bit of the original image. I'm just going to do this side first. So I'm going to do generative fill and fill this side in. And then I'll do the other side. Now you'll notice it didn't fill up on the top. So now I'm going to select that part and fill the top. Et voila. So the advantage of doing it piece by piece is that you actually have the choice then. So if we go back to the one on the right hand side, we have three choices. So I could choose which clouds and option I want on this side. Of course, you need to make that choice before you do the top part because you can see what happened here. But that's okay, we can regenerate that. If I like this cloud better than this one, I can shift it. So I'm gonna choose the third one here. Then let's go look at the left-hand panel, second option, and third option. I think the first one was the best anyways. But if I'm not happy with any of them, I could just generate it again. I kind of like this one. So now all you need to do, if you've changed the side panels and you've already done the top in this example, is just generate it again. So it's kind of like when I moved the starfish and regenerated. It's not gonna be the same clouds, but it's gonna to try to merge better with what's below now. I'm gonna go with this first one. It's pretty dramatic. The other thing that I added to the image before was some footprints in the sand. I had some issues with it before, so let's see if I can do any better now that I've been playing with it for a while. So I selected an area where I figured that she would have walked, and I just entered footprints but I try to indicate a direction so that the footprints would come up to her. Let's see if it works better now. So I'm gonna say footprints to the left. Yeah, see, I didn't get any footprints. So when you indicate directions or things like that, it doesn't work so well. So I'm just going to change the prompt to just footprints. And once again, I'm not getting any success. So now we have a log, and some bits of sand, but definitely not footprints. I like the log, but it's not what I asked for. So I'm going to remove this layer. So perhaps my selection wasn't good or my prompt wasn't good enough. Let's try something different. So I'm gonna do a selection again. Maybe she came from this corner instead. So I'm gonna go right up to her feet and I'm gonna say small footprints in the sand. So trying to get more specific, let's see if that works. Well, I got one footprint and another starfish, which is interesting, and some blobs. So that's not really what I was looking for once again. It's interesting that it added another starfish though. So if we look at this image from the original that I opened to where we are now, it's quite a transformation, right? At the end of the day, this is really just the beginning of Photoshop generative AI. And of course, it's the beta version. So I imagine it's only going to improve from here. What that means in regards to all the questions that we talked about earlier, who knows? So I think we just have to hang on and go for the ride and see where it takes us. 
If I lost you along the way using some of these tools really quickly and you want to catch up on your Photoshop skills, check out Photoshop for Photographers, the complete course. If you'd like to watch another video, try one of these.